What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and welcome to another Odd Facts video, this time about legendary Pokemon. When it comes to legendary and mythical Pokemon, they are given a lot of attention, not only in the form of being the centerpiece to all of the Pokemon games, but they're basically the centerpiece to all of the movies as well, and in general, their designs are given a lot more attention as well, because since they are legendaries, they of course have to have a lot of meaning and backstory behind their design, and they have to look cool as well. So with all of this attention going towards this particular group of Pokemon, you know there are bound to be a couple odd things that pop up every now and then. And of course, as we do with this series on this channel, I am going to be sharing with you guys 10 of the oddest facts about legendary and mythical Pokemon that I could find. Now, I am going to give a brief disclaimer here because for some reason this distinction is very important to some people, so I'm just going to say right now that this video is mostly about legendary Pokemon, but there is one fact about mythicals as well that I decided to include because, I mean, let's be honest here, they're basically the same thing. With all of that being said though, I have talked enough, so why don't we go ahead and just get into it. Here are 10 odd facts about legendary and mythical Pokemon. Starting with the Master of the Weather Trio, Rayquaza is actually unable to learn its signature move Dragon Ascent by level up, and it actually needs the help of a move tutor in order to be able to learn it at all. An interesting fact about Cresselia is that its body is made up of the three colors yellow, magenta, and cyan, and these three colors also just so happen to be the three subtractive colors. A subtractive color is defined as a color that when mixed with another subtractive color actually creates a brand new color by subtracting different wavelengths of light upon being mixed with another color. The reason why this is odd in Cresselia's case is because Cresselia is based around the moon, which actually reflects the light of the sun in order to create moonlight rather than absorbing it like these colors tend to do when mixed together. It also just so happens that these three colors are also shared with the lake guardians, Euxie, Azelf, and Mesprit. Speaking of Uxie, Azelf, and Mesprit, they can be found in the caverns of the three lakes Acuity, Verity, and Valor, and upon entering these three caverns, in addition to finding one of the lake guardians, you will also find two puddles sitting on the floor of the cavern as well. And the interesting thing about this is that each of these two puddles in each of the caverns actually correlates to the location of the other two caverns adjacent to the one that you are in, with the lake guardian actually taking the location on the map of the cavern that you are currently standing in at that point in time. Amongst Japanese fans, the Lake Guardians are also sometimes referred to as the Uma Trio, and this stands for Unidentified Mysterious Animal. The interesting thing about this is that Uma are actually the initials of the three Lake Guardians themselves, Yuxi, Mesprit, and Azelf, however this occurs in English only despite this being a Japanese nickname, where the Japanese names Yuxi with a Y, Agnome, and Emrit do not correlate to the initials of this name. Moving over to another legendary trio from the Sinnoh region, no two members of the Creation Trio actually have the same number of legs, believe it or not. And this is even considering Giratina's origin form as well. Because origin form Giratina has no legs, obviously, Palkia has two, Dialga has four, and altered form Giratina has six, which also goes up by twos if you didn't catch on. Also, on top of that, no two members also have the same number of immunities, with Palkia having none, Dialga having one, Giratina altered form having two, and origin form Giratina having three due to its levitate ability. The mythical Pokemon Mew is one of the most beloved and popular Pokemon of all time. However, there is a rather interesting and puzzling inconsistency surrounding its backstory. It's very famously known that battle designer Shigeki Morimoto actually snuck Mew into the game two weeks before the game development was finished, and neither Game Freak or Nintendo actually knew of its inclusion. However, with this such late inclusion in mind, it's also very interesting to note that Mew was actually the very first first Pokemon trademark ever applied for, and it was applied for way back in 1990, even before the Pocket Monster's name. 
In addition to that, the Mew trademark is also the very first Pokemon trademark ever registered, being registered officially in 1994, once again before even the name Pocket Monsters was officially registered as well. Once again, the reason why this is so inconsistent is because not only has it been stated that Shigeki Morimoto created Mew two weeks before the development of Pokemon Red and Green were finished, this actually comes from an interview with him directly in Nintendo Power Issue 134. So the fact that we have such a solid source for this statement very much conflicts with the fact that Mew was conceived apparently as early as 1990, a whole six years before the games even came out, and well before that two-week period when it is stated that Shigeki Morimoto actually created Mew. There is obviously a bit more backstory here that we don't know that seemingly would connect the dots together, but it is unknown if we will ever get that information, leaving us to wonder why this inconsistency is the way it is in the first place. James Turner, the Pokemon designer who is infamous for designing the Vanillish line, and is also the first Westerner to officially design Pokemon, actually had a hand in the design of a Pokemon well before Generation 5, because prior to working at Game Freak, he actually worked at Genus Sonority, the developer of Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness, and is responsible for the design of Shadow Lugia, as revealed by Turner himself on Twitter in August of 2017. Speaking of Lugia, it has often been wondered by fans why Lugia, the Guardian of the Seas, is part Psychic type instead of part Water type. Well, the answer to this was actually given by Shigeki Morimoto himself in an interview with Nintendo Dream Magazine, where he stated all the way back in Generation 2 when Lugia was introduced, the Psychic type was seen as a powerful type, and Lugia already had the Flying type due to the fact that it has wings, so they were only able to give it one more type, and due to the desire to make it seem powerful since it's a legendary Pokemon, it was ultimately given the Psychic type instead of the Water type. Swinging back into Generation 4 for a second, according to Junichi Masuda's blog, the Spanish translation team of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl actually made the suggestion of changing Dialga's name because it actually sounds very similar to the word Alga, which means seaweed, which of course has nothing to do with Dialga. But obviously Junichi Masuda did not heed that suggestion, and we got the Dialga name. And last, but certainly not least, we have a rather odd yet cool connection to the Pokemon Necrozma. Of course, we all know Necrozma as a trio master that was introduced in Generation 7 alongside Sogaleo and Lunala. Necrozma gets its name from Project Ozma, which was an experiment that was established in order to attempt to search for extraterrestrial life. However, Project Ozma actually got its name from Princess Ozma, who was the ruler of the one and only Land of Oz, from the classic children's novel and movie, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. So, albeit indirectly, Necrozma actually got its name from none other than the Wizard of Oz itself. I mean, that's practically the definition of an odd fact. And there we have it, everybody. Those were 10 odd facts about Legendary and one mythical Pokemon. Now, I really, really love doing these odd facts videos, and I think these Legendary Pokemon gave us some of the best odd facts that we have ever seen in the series. So if you guys enjoyed these facts and you enjoyed the video as much as I did, be sure to give it a like because it really helps out, and let me know down in the comments below which one of these facts was your favorite, or of course, if you have another fact you'd like to share. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, along with Let's Play videos every Monday and Friday as well. And if you like Pokemon tunes, feel free to check me out over on Spotify for some Pokemon remixes of my own, and that would really, really go a long way in supporting the channel, which I would really appreciate. With all of that being said, though, I will be back on Tuesday for another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it goes live. And until then, as always, I will see you then. I love you guys, and I will smell you guys later.